you're going to sit next to them. I mean, half of uh, 90% of film acting is sitting yeah. and not acting. Right. So it's like, uh, so it's like, can you spend time with these people? And they're not going to be like worse person. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, the be nice part I think is a big, yeah. big yeah. deal. I mean, like, it's only after you've been really successful that you get to like stop being nice if you want to. I think. I think like uh, like once you're a commodity, I feel like that's when you can turn the asshole on if you want to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or the level of talent has to be so great that it's worth it. Yes. Right. So like, yeah. the meaner you are, the better you have to be. Yeah. If you're a normal talent performer or you're growing in your talent, you better be nice. Yeah. To get and keep getting gigs. Yeah, if you're a friggin' genius and every time you speak, people are all like, is Shakespeare here? Because right. I'm totally right. filled with goosebumps. Right. Then you're like, oh, but he's a jerk. Well, you know, but right. Well, then right. you can be method on set and then send people rats as the Joker character and people are going to be <laughs> mad about it. They're like, you're Jared Leto. It's okay. Yeah. You're great. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to be Jared Leto. Poor yeah. Jared Leto. <laughs> I mean, I love him, but he—I mean, he's definitely one of those actors who, like, he'll be in everything, and then everyone will just rip him to shreds. Yeah. I mean, they're all like that asshole. You're like, what? He's great. Yeah. Like, he's not horrible. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna, Jared, I'm gonna go to bat for Jared Leto. Yeah. I don't know him at all personally. But yeah. I'm gonna bat for Jared Leto. I think that dude's probably an okay human being. Yeah. 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 I mean, of course, I, I watched myself called Life when I was a kid, so it's like just right there in the nostalgia. <laughs> sure. Heart. Yeah. So maybe I'm. Maybe Maybe I'm blinding myself, but... No, I mean, there's a bunch of other things that he's been in where it's like he's a bit part here or there, and you're like, it's great, he literally didn't have to do that much, but he filled in this spot that he needed to, and it was great. Yeah. You know. And he will, like, commit to something that, like, really he shouldn't. Kind of like, <laughs> uh, I think he put on a lot of weight to play the guy that shot John Lennon. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Nobody cared. Well, nobody gave yeah, a yeah. shit about that movie. Like, it ended up just, like, just happening and going away really quickly and it's like now look at you now you're like 85 pounds soaking wet as the Joker and yeah. it's like we're still mad at that I don't know <laughs> like it's like but he keeps doing it and it's like you gotta you gotta say something for Indomitable Will have you seen the pictures of Christian Bale playing um uh Dick Cheney no yeah, yeah he's gained <laughs> you know 60 70 pounds well that's uh, oh Christian Bale I love him so much but no, he's so I bet a huge dick exactly no, he's yeah. the worst yeah yes. there's like sort of documented evidence no, yeah, which I've tried to defend by the way <laughs> I have to admit that I've tried to be like okay there's no reason to yell at somebody who's working on a set let's start with that yeah but man, when you're putting that much effort into a thing, and that dude's putting all of his effort into every scene that he does, yeah. right? You're going to snap at some point, right? And if you're trying to do it and you're on take seven, yeah. and you've got to do it for take eight because some kid was talking, it's like, he's going to snap. It's like, I, that's not an excuse. No. Right? Don't yell at the poor kid, you know, who's, who's just a grip or whatever he's doing. But like... But the pressure has got to be great. And know? like, and and even if we find he's out that he didn't uh, sexually harass anyone, <laughs> then I'd be like, we're fine. It's fine. It's going to be like, but he never tried to have sex with me. Huh? Okay. <laughs> he just yelled at me. No, he definitely... <laughs> and like, he drew back like he was going to, you know... But it's fine. It's fine. That's what happens after, you know, you, you lose... 150 pounds to play like the machinist or whatever and this one kid trips over something right? man think of those trainers who like when he comes back and he's all like what's up Christian okay Let's start with some cardio alright yeah, right. like those trainers who work with them the people who fluctuate so intensely and I wonder about like doctors like when they talk to them they're like you really shouldn't gain 60 pounds oh. you know they could give you a fat suit right like you yeah. literally don't have to do this but they're so method that they like have to understand what that means yeah exactly and I, I guarantee you doctors are telling them I mean his kidneys are ruined from that stuff I mean fighters have this problem yeah I, mean, I watch yeah, yeah, yeah. MMA and I think about MMA a lot and fighters have this problem from cutting weight uh, can't handle that, and his body is not going to be healthy because of it. I mean, he went from the machinist to Batman pretty quickly, very quickly, mm. yeah. And I mean, he must have gained fifty pounds of muscle to do that. It's like that is not. I mean, obviously, going down to the weight that he went to the machinist is not healthy, right? Right. Um, uh, but even going from where he is up to 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 where he's playing Straight Cheney up. and then <laughs> back down to his normal weight is going to be unhealthy. And like, you also have to like think about like the added pressure of probably constantly being recorded on some level. You know, it's like when you're on set, there's audio equipment everywhere. The idea that, like, 
at any point that you might lose your emotional stability for a second, that it's going to go on TMZ or some shit. Like, that would stress me out. Like, the idea that I have to, like, sound like a good person all the time. Yeah, totally. You know, it's like, because everybody should be afforded, a, like, a hissy fit, you know? Yeah, and, yeah but I mean, uh, again, with reference to, like, this, the stuff that's going on right now where it's, like, people are being horrible to each other in a sexual nature and a, like, in using their power to make people do things they don't want to do. Like, I feel like in that new world of film and stuff, like, because things will change over the next, like, five, ten years where the industry won't allow for sexual abuse, but I bet you it's going to be totally fine to be just a diva. Right. Like, yeah. it's like, hey, you know what? Like, that's all right. Uh, and he's and Christian Bale's one of those people like we were saying like his talent is so amazing he so completely becomes that person that you're like eh let him yell at me yeah. I will accept it like I would legitimately become his personal assistant right. knowing he would scream in my face right. and I'd be like mm-hmm, yeah okay yeah. you're right this latte is disgusting that's, that's, <laughs> that's Batman spit on my face that's that's great you know like, right. you're welcome sir <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I what were you saying before? I had a thought. Um, where did we get? What were we talking about? There? What were we talking Game about? Wave. Being recorded a lot, or yes, it was. And all I was going to say was like, it's the quantum theory of observation, right? Things change as you observe them, absolutely. and that absolutely happens in celebrity, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you talk to you know, if you hear celebrities speak honestly about their experience, more often than not, that experience exists, or, or some element of that experience is like you're being observed all the time. It feels like you're being watched. Right. Right. I mean, my sister uh, gets or used to get like Us Weekly magazines and they have spreads in them that say they're just like us. And it's (laughs) pictures of celebrities like going to the grocery store and like feeding their kids. And it's like Ben Affleck is just like us. He shops at Trader Joe's. It's like... As if people are astounded that celebrities are human beings. Yeah, yeah. And that has got to warp your sense of reality. How could it not warp your sense of reality if people are treating you like that? It's weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Nicolas Cage being this other sort of... Not even... Because I, I, he might be mean, but like that's that, that falls so far down on the list yeah, of right. things Nicolas Cage is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like he is... He is a madman. And I... But the thing is... Is I I'm I'm kind of like that with how you are with Christian Bale where it's like I would love to just be like his therapist or like you know like somebody who's in charge of his emotional well being just to watch it fly out the window yeah. every day you know like because I think he started off like that I don't think Nicolas Cage built up to to being this insane no. like he well but Nicolas Cage was like born that. into the a film world. family yeah. so like he didn't like he isn't like a guy from Omaha who like worked yeah. his way up he was like born and then they were like wouldn't it be cool if he were in this movie like right. eh, almost like my baby who I put <laughs> in all the things <laughs> like already put him in a movie like it's like yep. yeah he's just gonna get used to that and yeah. later when he's an accountant he'll be like yeah I did some movies as a baby it's embarrassing <laughs> you know no I was gonna say like it was I mean he was like a month out and I was just like hey is it cool if I write a sketch where he's a wrestler you know <laughs> I was just like, when is it okay for us to start writing your baby in this stuff? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> when is it he's not to grow person? into the baby size wrestling mask? <laughs> yeah. In order, in order for that to be okay. I wanted to, I wanted to actually get a luchador mask and yeah. put it on the baby, and yeah. I was like, we had to. I really had to understand that that's probably not okay yet. You know, like just well, like, he just put, wouldn't put anything face. on his head. Yeah, 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 yeah like covering his face is. We gotta wait a little more before <laughs> I can start covering his face. I get it. Yeah. I get it. He's like just super new to breathing. Yeah, no, he's got to he's, he's get a little better at being alive just on his own. Yeah, yeah. just a couple Just times. with everything perfect and him being able to breathe well. We take yeah. advantage of all these things, like our bodies <laughs> working and us knowing how to eat. Yeah. 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 It's so funny how... Uh, but, I mean, with reference to Nicolas Cage, like, I feel like he already knew what was what the world was like because I'm sure... I mean, all of that family is in the movies, whether they're directors or producers or actors or whatever. So it seems just like he swung in and was in everything. Also, I bet he's not a jerk because he's in so many movies. He wouldn't be in so much stuff, I think. I mean, admittedly, his name is some cachet, so that helps. But I think that, like, he has to be a little okay or else, like, you know. I think think it has a lot to do with him 
evading taxes and owing the IRS a ton of money. Does he? That's all he Yeah. <laughs> so I think he's in a lot of movies because he's paying the everything. All his money is going to the IRS and he's trying to pay down his debt. That makes me feel a lot better about the fact that very recently my husband and I decided to watch every movie we could find with Nicolas Cage. It's great. And we've watched even the random, we're like, what is this? And I was like, just turn it on. Yeah. Who cares? Let's watch it. And we're like, this is horrible. I was like, to the end, man, to the end. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really fun project. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It's, like, it's like, for a minute there, in the 90s, he was like, my favorite action star. And it's like, Con Air, Face Off, The yeah. Rock, yeah. those are three of my favorite movies like like for real in a real way and it was like he went i like he went from finishing con air to the next day doing face off and it's like holy shit man like it takes a lunatic to be able to pull that kind of like effort out and also to just make two of my favorite movies back to back you know like literally those two movies are perfect in my eyes <laughs> Mainly because John Travolta comes and adds his own level of craziness. So insane. And then John Malkovich, you know, like, not even knowing what the hell this movie's about. <laughs> like, I remember, like, uh, I remember seeing something where he went to the screening, and he was, like, excited to see what this movie was. Because <laughs> yeah. they were constantly writing and editing Con Air, like, and rewriting while they were shooting. So, like, John Malkovich got out of that set, and he was just like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. What did I just do? Well, a lot of times in movies, they, like, don't tell you what the rest of the movie's about. They give yeah. you your page, yeah, you, your you read your thing, and then you're like, okay, great. Yeah. And they're like, so you're an angry guy, and you're gonna yell at this guy for three minutes, and right. then you're gonna leave. Thanks, have a great day. <laughs> well, Malkovich's so, part was relatively small in Con Air, too, so yeah, yeah. it's reasonable to think that, like, he probably got seven pages of the 90-page script. <laughs> 70 page script it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but he didn't get very much of it which has got to be a cool experience though going in and being like cool I'm going to watch a movie that I'm in I have no idea what's up with it yeah yeah it's yeah, kind of yeah, 100% fun. like <laughs> it's like improv we just yeah. crashed a plane into the Vegas strip yeah. but I was in jail in the last <laughs> like, what the hell yes. yeah it is like <laughs> improv right shit it's like cool I know I'm a psychopath I know nothing else <laughs> See what happens. Oh, <laughs> well, it's like you find out Nicholas Cage is on the project, and you're just like, oh, "Okay, so I, so this is not going to make any sense yeah. from start to finish. Right. Like, like no matter what, this is going to be the most interesting thing that's happened to me all year." You know? <laughs> oh man. Well, I guess to that question, what's the most interesting thing that's happened to you all year? All year. That's a uh, thank you for that phrase because I was like, "That's a nice wrapper upper." Oh man. Okay. It you sounds tell like the storytelling story story show that yeah. you've done it seems like a, you probably have to leaf through a lot of examples there. Yeah, I know. What is the most interesting thing that I've done this year? Yeah. Has this year been a normal year? I mean... I went to Egypt in February. That's the most interesting thing I did. That was what? Yeah, I went to Egypt on a, uh, on a Magical Egypt John Anthony West tour. Uh, in February for two weeks. That was life-changing. Incredible. Wow. What, who's John Anthony West? So John Anthony West is an Egyptologist um, that I encourage everybody to look into. Um, uh, and the tour was run by Dr. Robert Schock, who is his colleague and also an incredible... He's a, um, he is a, uh, a geologist. Yeah, he's a geologist. Um, and they're incredible. And the tour was... So John Anthony West and Robert Schock were the ones who helped prove that the Sphinx is significantly older than we thought it was because there's water weathering on the Sphinx and there wasn't water in the Nile Valley for thousands of years. Um, and so they take their tours take you through Egypt and kind of explain what they believe to be a different history than we've come to understand um, so Egyptologists you know think that these structures are you know were built in in, uh, in ancient Egypt times and we're beginning to realize that they were probably built significantly earlier than that in some form or fashion wow yeah that is super wild Egypt it's such a politically volatile place. How did you like, I mean, I'm always worried being an American to like go to a, any place where they're all like, you guys are the worst. So I wonder with all the tumultuousness, did you encounter any weird politics or anything? Or did you just go straight out to the yeah. Sphinx and the, that area and not the cities? So the tour, I tried to go out in the city as much as I could. Um, the tour is very well constructed. Um, Mohammed Nazmi, I can't remember the name of his tour company, but he's the guy who runs it in Egypt. Um, is very well connected um, and they have done this tour for like 20 years they did it there was a tour happening during the revolution 
and I, I got to see one of our tour guides. Um, I got to see his video uh, of him being in Tahir Square uh, during the revolution with his kids. Because like, I just took my kids and brought them out. And then he told me this incredible story about like taking the tour people and trying to get them to the airport where they could be secure and like having to go back and forth from Giza to the Cairo.